Hi, everybody. Welcome. We are outside in my yard because it is a very special time when we have to release, that means let free, our painted lady butterflies. And it's a very exciting time. And before I let them go and release them, I want to just talk about why I have to let them go. In this little space, there's not a lot of oxygen for them to breathe. So when they fly out into the open, into the air, and into the environment, they have a lot more oxygen to breathe in, and they're able to live. Also, there is not a lot of space in this butterfly home right here. Butterflies need a lot of space to fly around and live. So when I let them go and release them, they'll have all the space they need to live happily. Also, I can't provide enough food for them and I can't provide a lot of natural food, which is their nectar and water to allow them to survive a long time. So by letting them free, they get to drink all the sweet nectar of flowers around them. And then they get to look for puddles that rain makes and they get to drink lots of more water. Also, if I left this outside, it would rain in there and they would get wet. In their natural habitat, there's a lot of trees and bushes and very tall plants that they can find shelter. They can find new homes and be safe. So they get a lot of different kinds of shelter in their natural environment for them to be free. So boys and girls, are you ready? So I'm going to unzip the top. Now what I like to do is be patient and wait to see if they fly out on their own. So watch carefully and we'll just see what happens for a few moments. And we'll see if the painted ladies fly out on their own. What? <gasps> there goes one. <laughs> bye bye. Sometimes they need a little help to figure out which way is upward to fly out. So I'm going to help the painted lady butterfly. <gasps> bye bye. There goes another one. By the way, I'm letting them go near the azalea because it's full of flowers. And there's also a lilac bush. So there's plenty of nectar for them. I'm going to help another one. Oh, it's getting ready. Woo! Let's see if it goes on its own. It's flying around. Here it comes. Go ahead. Be free. Be free. Woo! There it goes. Bye bye, painted lady. We have another one. Oh, there it goes. And one more. Ah, there it goes. Bye-bye, painted lady. Okay, boys and girls. Our painted ladies are free. They're flying around in their natural habitats where they belong. Now, while we're out here, I thought that I could just read a little bit about butterflies and moths. How can you tell butterflies and moths apart? 
Most butterflies fly by day, while moths fly by night. Butterflies are usually more brightly colored. And at the end of a butterfly's antenna is a little knob. Butterflies hold their wings up over their backs when they rest or land. So if you're out playing outside and you happen to notice an insect and you don't know if it's a butterfly or a moth, butterflies will land with their wings up. Sweet sips. Like bees, butterflies feed on nectar. They use their long tongues to reach deep into flowers and suck out the nectar as you would sip through a straw. Growing up, butterflies go through stages to become adults. They start life as eggs and hatch into young caterpillars. After more growing and changing, they finally become full grown butterflies. Butterflies come in many, many sizes. Some butterflies as, are as small as a grain of rice and other butterflies are as big as your thumbnail. They can be eight to 12 inches long too. Rainbow colors. Butterflies come in every color in the rainbow. Their wings are covered with thousands of tiny scales of different colors to form some of the most beautiful designs in nature. And here we have the caterpillar going through the stages of life and then emerge into the painted lady butterfly. So boys and girls, the butterflies will remain here and look for sweet nectar in flowers to drink and drink rainwater and find shelter. It was so fun observing the stages of a butterfly with you. Now we're going to take a little walk and we're going to plant our string beans together. So boys and girls, here is the string bean plant that I have for you. And I'm just going to dig a widespread hole in this pot. Now remember we started this string bean plant in a tomato container. So I'm going to just take it apart. And gently pull out the plant. Now, the way you plant a vegetable or flower or small bush is they usually come in containers at a nursery. And you wanna squeeze around the container. And what that does is it loosens up the soil and the roots. And then when you have done that, you gently turn it on its side. And you gently pull all around. So you get the whole string bean plant. And then, if you notice the bottom, those are all the roots. And there's rocks at the bottom to help the soil stay loose and helps the water drain. So I'm just going to gently pull. 
take it out. And sometimes you have to use your fingers and get them in the roots because we want to be very careful that we get the whole plant in there. And here it comes, gently pulling out all the roots. Then, because our plants are very tall, you have to do what's called staking them, which means you can go on a stick hunt and stick tall sticks inside them so that they stand up and continue growing. Now, the last thing we have to do, boys and girls, is water our plant. So I have a watering can. You can use a watering pitcher. You can use a recycled juice container. You can use a can, anything you want. And I'm gently watering it all around so the roots get wet. And just like we cared for it indoors with our sink water and sunshine, now we can keep it outside and continue watering it. And there we have our string bean plant. Okay, boys and girls, this was so fun. Letting our butterflies go, it's called releasing. And moving our string bean plants to a bigger pot because they also need more space and more oxygen to allow them to grow. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.